Hello everybody, it's Murray here from M Stuart Paintings and on today's acrylic painting show we're going to learn how to paint realistic light and clouds. So it's a real super easy tutorial today, you're only going to need a few colours, they are titanium white, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, burnt sienna and ivory black. Now we're going to use a white canvas today, hooray, and we're going to just use a big brush and we're just going to block in a base coat for our whole canvas, which is going to be our sky. So we're going to take cobalt blue and we're going to add a little bit of purple to that. So I'm using iris purple, which is, co is a cool purple. You can make that use normal purple and cobalt blue. We're going to add some Burnt Sienna, which is an orangey brown. If you haven't got that, you could use some orange and some brown. And we're gonna add some black and some cerulean blue and some white. So the whole mixture is cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, a dot of purple, and a little bit of black and plenty of white to get this lovely sort of purpley blue color. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to speed the footage up just for a minute, just while I block in the whole canvas, just because it's not very interesting, there's no technique or anything. But all we want to do is we want to cover our whole canvas. If you get any streaks in your um, paint, you can always dry it with a hairdryer and give it a second coat of this blue. But all we want to do is just cover our canvas and make it nice and blue. And this is going to be our back ground sky and when you are finished I'll turn the speed back on the video could you please dry your work with a hair dryer or just let it air dry so your canvas is nice and dry with this blue base coat so we've got this lovely blue sky now and I'm going to teach you just a little tips and tricks for painting clouds. So we're going to use titanium white to create an outline, but a lot of people when they paint, sometimes they get a bit nervous and they lose a bit of self-confidence. So I want to teach you just a trick that if you are a bit like that, how you can use a hairdryer and dry your work at stages to ensure that you don't cock up anything, you don't muck anything up. So look, if you put some paint on this dry canvas that we've just painted, and it goes wrong look you can just wipe it away and the whole thing that you've worked on is still there because it's nice and dry and you could even do this if you want to you can block in your clouds with chalk and then paint over them and again look you could just use something like a baby wipe to wipe it away so if you're a bit nervous when you're painting always dry your work and then what you can do is then put the outlines and put shapes in and if you don't like them, as I say, you can always use a baby wipe or a wet cloth just to wipe it away. So all I'm doing here, I'm just using titanium white. And all I'm going to do is start blocking in shapes of clouds. So this um, actual painting is just based on a sky that I just took a picture of with my phone, just looking up at the sun. And I thought it'd be really easy to make a tutorial out of it. So all I'm doing, I'm just using pure titanium white to block in some shapes of some clouds. We're not going to have any detail, we're just going to use titanium white. So it's easy to use a smaller headed brush because then you can just get loads of white paint and you can get quite thin lines. Well, all we're trying to do when painting clouds, we want to make them quite marshmallowy. We want to make them all sort of bobbly. You don't want them too straight. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just splatting the paint down and I'm trying to create rough edges and they're never too straight. They're always got bobbles in them and breaks. So look, I'm just going to make big lumps and breaks in them just so they're never too straight or square. So we've got some nice ones here on the side. We could have a, uh, let's have a big one at the, at the top of the canvas. So we can have this one breaking away. So again, look, we're just trying to make them all bobbly. If you push down hard, you'll get quite a thick outline. And if you ease up in the texture, you can get sort of a chalky residue so if you want to make any sort of breakaway clouds, any ones that are sort of fluffy, just scrape your, your little brush back and forth against the canvas. And the canvas texture, because it's rough, will just leave a, a chalky residue. See like that? So if you want to get lots of paint, look, you can get a thick outline. And if you want more of a chalky residue, 
Just don't have much paint on your brush and just scrape it against the canvas. So let's have a breakaway one here that's sort of come away. We can have little bits and bobs of clouds. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have the sun right in the middle as a central point. So what I'm going to do is just create a little circle in titanium white. And again, we're going to dry our painting with a hairdryer before we move on to the next stage. So we've got this lovely dry canvas again. So it's all dry. And what we're going to do, we're going to, the reason we're going to have it dry is because we're going to work on the blending of light around the sun. So I've got a completely dry brush, nice and clean brush. And all we're going to do, we're going to mix some cerulean blue. So cerulean blue is much more turquoise. And we're going to add lots and lots of white to it. A little bit of cobalt blue, just a tad to darken it up. But more cerulean blue than anything. And white. And just a dot of purple just to cool it down. So loads of cerulean blue. Loads of white. So we've got this lovely pastel glow colour. And what I want you to do, we've got a dry, really soft blender brush. What I want you to do is wipe away 95% of all the paint. So you can use a bit of kitchen towel. And all we want to do with this dry, really soft brush is just create a little circle around our sun. So don't worry if you cover it up, we can put it back in. So we're trying to create the glow of light around the sun. And then what we're going to do is we're going to again wipe off 90% five percent of the rest of the paint so we're going to get look even more paint off the brush and we're just going to smear it look watch almost like coloring in so if any of you guys at home ever use color pencils or a crayon you know how to shade where if you push down really hard you're going to get lots of an imprint of paint on your canvas but if you ease up so we're pushing down hard around the sun around that circle so we're just going to get more of the paint off look more of the paint off so I've got near enough nothing, hardly any paint on my brush now. And look, all we're going to do, just so gently, almost just, just so delicately, I'm just letting some of that chalky residue come off my brush and it's just smoothing into the texture of the canvas. So now we're so zoomed in, you can see, look, the texture of the canvas. You can see all the little, uh, what's it called, the cotton thread marks. So look, all we're doing, look, we're just smearing that to create this glow effect of light. And it's so much easier. This is what I was saying to you. If you've got a nice dry canvas and a nice dry brush, it takes two minutes and it's such an easy trick. You can do use this for shading anything. You can shade light on anything with acrylics or darken anything up. It's such an easy trick. So we've got this lovely glow. And what we're going to do, we're just going to get a little bit more paint. And... We're just going to wipe away most of it. And we're going to create some sunbeams. So we're just going to come out with a bit of a thinner brush. I'm just using quite a smaller brush. And all I'm doing, I'm just coming out straight from the sun in a nice line. And same going upwards. Once I move my hand. There we go. So we've got this nice sunbeam. And let's have a diagonal one. Let's have a wonky one. Let's have one coming diagonally. So we're doing the same trick, look, and that chalky residue. We've got hardly any paint on our dry brush. There we go, look at that. So we create this lovely glow and this lovely sunbeam. And look, you can shade it in, look. If you want to blend it even more, just take your time. You can go over the sunbeams to emphasise them more, if you want them to stick out more. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to put our sun back. Now we've got the glow. So we're going to put our titanium white sun back. So there we go. We're just going to create a little circle. And when I zoom out, it should look very realistic. Look at that. Look at that glow. So all from using a dry brush on a dry canvas and wiping away 95% of the paint. So we're going to use the same technique on our cloud. So just like always, we're going to put the shadows on first. So we're going to use this burnt sienna. So burnt sienna is just an orangey brown. So you can make that with orange and brown. And we're just going to add some cobalt blue to that. Okay, so burnt sienna and cobalt blue. Got a dot of purple. 
So we should get this nice dark browny blue. And we're just going to add a little bit of black. And we're just going to add a lot of white to the mix just so it's not too harsh. So we can test this out. So we'll get it all nice and mixed. So all the color is one color. And what we're going to do, we're going to put some shadows in first. So I'm going to test it on my canvas. Now, because we put a lot of the orangey brown in the burnt sienna, I think it's a bit too warm. We want this to be dark. So what I'm going to do just to make it cooler, do you remember all the hot colors are things like oranges and reds and yellows? To make things cooler, we want to add things like blues and purples. So what I'm going to do is just add more cobalt blue to the mix. There we go. And it's now cooler in shade and color. So just by adding blues, we can make it nice and cool. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the outline and I'm just blocking in some of this bottom of the cloud because I want to create some really harsh um, shadows. And before we blend it all in, so I'm just going to create a nice contrast with this dark bluey brown. So there we go, we just block this in. I want to make the left hand corner quite dark because obviously I'm going to sign it there. So I'm just going to load up my brush. Let's have some over here. So before we do the corner, let's put some over on this big one. And by having a really dark shadow, what it does, it works really well with the really bright highlights. It's a good like... Um, polarity it's a good thing like so we're going to make this really really dark it's a good thing to make your clouds highlights stand out more by using really really dark shadows so we don't want to put too many because uh, this sun is so bright a lot of this these clouds are going to be almost luminous white because obviously they're right in the uh the firing zone for all that light but i want to make my corners a little bit darker and just have some shadows just so there's a nice contrast. So we've got this nice contrast between some areas that are really dark and some of that are extremely bright. So we're going to dry it again and then we're going to do some of the shading. So we're going to do just like we did around the sun. We're going to get a nice clean dry brush. We're going to get some of that turquoise. Mine's unfortunately dried. It's a really lovely hot day here in London. So I'm just going to mix some more. So it was, was white, cerulean blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, but mainly cerulean blue and white. You can add a dot of purple if you want to, but we just want loads of cerulean blue and white. So we're going to mix that up. We're going to take away lots of the paint off our brush because look, if you don't take it away, it's going to be it's going to be too overwhelming. So look, we're going to take it take most of it off and we're just going to do the shading technique so just like we did with the glow we're just going to do that on the edges to make all these edges really soft and fluffy and it's so it gently blends into that darker color so just let the paint just gradually if i zoom in for you look just it just comes off like a little chalky residue we can just create shapes and bubbles in our clouds and just make the jump from the really bright whites to the really dark shadows not look so harsh. So there we go. So I want to leave that corner nice and dark for my signature so I don't want to put much detail. But this area would be quiet in the sun. So we're just going to shade around these dark shadows. So look, you can wipe away 95% of the paint and just do the exact same trick. It's so easy. So let's just blend these two shapes together. And you can even use this chalky shape to create little breakaway clouds and, and make your edges all nice and fluffy. So look, if you want to make the edges of your clouds nice and fluffy, just like the glow, look, you can just do that. And you can create little breakaway clouds. Look, you can push down really gently so you're hardly touching the canvas and you can just have little fluffy marshmallow clouds make some of these edges nice and soft look so it's so easy it's such an easy technique and the great thing is, is as i was showing you at the beginning if you do make a mistake you can just wipe it away and you're painting all your outline everything's still there so don't be nervous just take your time 
So we shade you in, let's do this side. So look, if I put too much paint, look, it's a big blob. And there's no smooth edges, there's no mixing. So just by wiping away most of the paint, look, it's so much easier to then blend. And just blend that sharp outline into that dark shadow. So loads of the tutorials, we teach you about bridge colors. If you think this color is just a bridge, so we don't have a really harsh white on a really dark black. So we're just trying to mix the two together. And look, you can add texture as well. So if you want to add any bubbles or, or um, bubbles, excuse me, bobbles or texture in your clouds to make them look more 3D, you can do that. There's no worries. So we're just shading and creating texture. It's so easy and relaxing. And now everyone's got camera phones. It's so easy just to take a picture of clouds. If you have a nice sunny day and you've got some clouds, just take a nice picture. And you can use it as a reference. So I'm just going to make this one a little bit softer because this one's directly above the sun. So I'm going to make this area nice and soft. I'm still I'm leaving gaps in the original sky color just to create the illusion of texture. Just so it looks more 3D. We could have a little breakaway one here, nice little fluffy one. Make this edge a little bit fluffy. Here we go. So that's looking fab. It's all blocked in. It's looking really, really pretty. And I think this one's just a bit too bland. So I'm just going to do the same trick. Just add a little bit of texture to her. So I'm just going to make some bubbles and texture on her. So there we go. Just so it looks a bit more interesting. Okay, so she's all blocked in. She's all looking fab. And we can dry her. And then we're just going to get titanium white, so pure titanium white. And all we're going to do is acrylics, when they, especially used in highlights like white, they're going to pick up the undercolor of whatever you put down. So this white would be picking up the cerulean blue underneath it. So by drying it and then adding a second layer of paint, what you can do is make your highlights extremely vibrant and extremely bright. And this is how you get the realism. So by just taking your time and going round the edges with a sharp titanium white and then if it dries your work a little bit flat, just having the patience just to dry it and go over it a second time, you can just make these whites extremely vibrant. So now this is dry, look, our outline, we're just going over it a second time and we can do the same technique. We can we can have, I'm just using a fine liner, but I've got hardly any paint on my brush. I'm using the majority of the paint on the edges because I want to get nice, really, look, so I'm going to get loads of thick paint. So imagine like my finger, if that's close to the light source, this, this edge is going to be getting an extreme amount of light, isn't it? It's going to get really, really bright. So we're using really thick paint on this edge. And then I'm just going to wipe the paint away and I'm just going to smear it and just bridge it into that cerulean blue. Easy peasy. So all the transitions look nice and smooth. It looks very nice and realistic. So we've got this nice dark area here, but I think it's a bit too dark. So I'm just going to poke some sunlight through it using this white. So look, just like we did with the texture, you can poke holes in your clouds. So if you want to make them look more 3D, you can just use some of the light or some of the background sky just to poke some holes in it. So even some of these edges would be extremely outlined. But the left hand corner would be a little bit more in the shade. So I'm going to make a nice bright outline, but I'm going to leave it nice and dark. And then if I sign my work in white, 
I've got a nice dark background color for when my white signature stands out against it. So another trick to create the realism is having some of these breakaway clouds. So just by getting lots of titanium white onto a fine liner, you can have some of these like parts of the clouds that are breaking off, sort of these little fluffy areas, and you just use the fine liner just to create little dots and shapes. And this really adds to the realism. It just makes it look like these these uh, clouds are sort of breaking apart from the main big ones. So again, look, this area will be getting lots of sunlight, this edge, we could have little breakaway parts, or well, even some of the fluffy ones, but we're really emphasizing the highlights around the sun. So I'm just loading up my brush, this edge is gonna be extremely bright. So just by going over the top, I can make it look really sharp and bright. Just letting the paint run off my brush. So we have some of it in the shade, some of it getting the real extreme bright the sun. And the same here, just above the sun. So it's just trying to figure out where the light would be and just using more of that titanium white to have really sharp highlights some areas and leaving some of that cerulean blue and the more darker color in other areas. And look, you can even have little breakaway ones coming off from the edges. Again, just to make the composition look more realistic. So all these little added layers of detail are really what adds to the realism. So we've done that side, so let's do this side. We'll do the exact same techniques. So this area is gonna get lots of sharp sun and we can have some breakaway parts. We can even add some texture to this big one. Now there's the subscribe button. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. And if you turn the bell notification, YouTube will alert you every week when we add a new tutorial. I try to a, do a new tutorial every week. This was a tutorial suggested by a um, person on Instagram who was struggling with clouds. So if there's anything you want to learn, just put the ideas in the comments or DM me on Instagram at, at mstuartpaintings and hopefully I can make a tutorial to help you guys. So let's have this area again, really in the sunlight. I like that it's really bright white and sort of broken up, so I kind of like that, I'm gonna leave that. It's kind of happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. So we're just gonna do the same in this top corner. But I'm gonna leave most of the top right hand corner a bit darker with that cerulean blue because that area wouldn't be getting as much light. So some breakaway parts here just so it's a bit more interesting. Got a bit of texture, why not? And then this bottom of this cloud would be getting lots and lots of sunlight, wouldn't it? So the sun would be coming up onto the base of it, onto its belly. So let's make this really vibrant. And this one here. Some bits breaking off from it. So let's make the belly of this cloud really, really bright. Add some texture. There we go. So it's so easy once you know how. And that is looking fab, isn't it? So it's looking super real already. We've only, what, 25 minutes? So let's get some cerulean blue and white. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make the glow a little bit bigger around our sun just so it's a bit bigger so i'm just gonna get cerulean blue and lots and lots of white and i'm gonna load up my dry brush oops got too much paint so i'm just gonna get rid of it and i'm just gonna make the glow a bit more extreme so just like we did with the highlights by adding the second coat of paint sometimes you can just make everything look a bit more professional so just i'm gonna make a big ring so think of a donut i'm gonna make a big ring going around this glowing sun and I'm going to do my sunbeams now with this cerulean blue and white so I'm going to make them look a lot more brighter so same technique I've 
got a dry brush, dry canvas. Oops, there's my dog. <laughs> Don't know why she was in the video. She must have sneaked in. Um, yeah, so I've got a dry brush, dry canvas. And all I'm doing is putting a second layer of paint on. And then I'm wiping away most of the paint. I've got a little bit more paint than last time. Because I just want to make this glow a bit bigger. So I've just got a little bit more paint. Still dry canvas, dry brush. I'm just letting the paint run out. And I'm just smearing it against the texture of the canvas. So same as before. But I just want to really emphasize this sunlight. Make it look much more realistic. So just letting the paint glide against the canvas. Create this lovely glow. Look at that. So easy. So I'm just glazing over the top just making the transitions look smoother so if there's a bit of a line in my canvas i'm just noticing that and just trying to make the glow as smooth as possible and then all i'm going to do is get a little bit of titanium white and add it to the mix so a little bit more titanium white so it's really lots of titanium white now and just a tiny bit of cerulean blue i'm going to do the dry brush technique again i'm going to hardly have any white um, excuse me paint coming from my brush and I'm just going to come out from the sun. I'll move my big hand in a minute. And all I've done is created an X. Can you see that? And I'm just going to blend it now. So I'm just going to blend the white into the cerulean blue sunbeams. Just so it looks like that the sunbeams are much more realistic. So again, it's just a little added realism. Just to create that glow around the sun. And make the sunbeams look realistic. So there you go. And then I'm just going to get more titanium white and I'm just going to put back in my sun because obviously we've been smearing her and she's not as vibrant. So again, just by going over the top, we make it look really vibrant. And then just to finish it, as I was saying to you, sometimes if your acrylic painting does dry a bit flat and your highlights don't look as bright as when the painting is wet, just dry it and reapply some titanium white just to get that extremely bright highlights look here on the clouds. So it's very common with acrylics for it to look really, really special while you're painting it because the paint's wet and when it dries, obviously it's not been varnished. It kind of loses that shimmer and that sort of vibrancy. So just by going over the paint twice, it does make it all your whites look much more bright you can do a little trick you could use oil paint but obviously this is an acrylic painting tutorial but you could use a little bit of titanium white oil paint just to outline your clouds um, because oils are so much more vibrant and obviously slow to dry they dry with the same vibrancy as what you put them on the canvas so they will look really really extremely bright white so that is a little trick and you could even, God, I'm telling you all my secrets, use gloss acrylics. So gloss acrylic whites, which again, is just a more vibrant white, which is um, gloss acrylics. You can buy them from anywhere and they're very, very cheap. And they just, again, dry with a more shiny um, sort of texture. So take your time. Just think where you want some of your highlights to be highlighted. And just go over the top. Same with the little breakaway ones. And I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. So we've painted the underpainting in that lovely blue. We've got the lovely dry brush technique to create the glow and the sunbeams. And then put in our central sun in just titanium white. You've learned how to block in clouds and then how to create the shadows first. We've used the bridge color with the light cerulean blue. And then the really extreme white highlights to get this glow. And then you've learned how to do breakaway clouds to make the realism and create the fluffy edges so all in all a really easy landscape painting tutorial so thank you so much for watching this how to paint realistic clouds tutorial my name is murray um, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already we've got plenty i think we've got over a hundred tutorials now on the channel um, and don't forget to tag me at m Paintings on instagram to see your versions so thank you see you later bye